Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Mark Smith of Niacorp. How are you today? Very well, Tracy. Good to be back. Mark, you've had so much news that what I'm going to do is start from your most recent news and work our way back. And okay. you just announced a second resource update that now turns you into a world-class scandium and titanium deposit. Can you talk to us about this? Yeah, that's, uh, it was very good news, obviously, and, and uh, I, I should probably apologize to everyone that we ended up with two press releases on the resource estimate, but we just could not get the assay results back fast enough on the scandium and the titanium. But we have uh, an outstanding resource for scandium and an outstanding resource for titanium in addition to the, ni ni the niobium. And the good news is, is that the recovery of both the scandium and the titanium will have zero impact on the recovery of niobium. We've really got the metallurgy for all three of those minerals figured out, and we will continue to scale up our testing, uh, those metallurgical processes, but they all seem to be very independent in terms of how we're processing them and the recoverabilities. Of course, this was the second news release. The first one was about a substantial uh, change in your resource tonnage increase. Right. So for everyone who may have missed that particular news release, can you just back us up and, and give us an overview on this one as well? Tracy, as you know, we did a three-phase drilling program. And the first phase of our drilling, which occurred kind of in the summer of last year, uh, although had, it had resource um, you know, implications to it, the primary drivers in the first six holes were geotechnical and hydrogeological so that that information could then feed into the feasibility study. We went ahead and issued an updated resource report in September on the basis of the phase one drill results. We were very happy with those drill results, but you know, I would, I would have to be the first to say that they didn't wow anybody when we issued those drill results. We went ahead and finished phase two of the drilling. We finished phase three of the drilling. And then we put those two phases together in a new resource update that we issued about two weeks ago. And as we suspected, uh, we ended up with a wow press release where you know we, we doubled and tripled the sizes of, of the ore body and the contained metal. Our uh, ore grade also increased. So this was very good news, uh, not only for the company, uh, but for the people who designed that drilling program with such a tight scope and obviously really good for our shareholders and that's who we serve so we're happy to, to uh, treat our shareholders that way and uh, we'll continue to do the, the work necessary to increase value that's what it's all about. Well speaking of increasing value this particular headline said 187 percent increase in ind indicated resource tonnage and right. of course 226 percent increase in your niobium correct? That's correct. Those are some pretty big numbers, no doubt about it. It really uh, turns this resource into a very real resource for project purposes now. Well, obviously your shareholders do agree. Uh, you were the top performing mining company on the TSX Venture Exchange last year, and for anyone who's not familiar with this, um, not only were you number one in the mining sector, but overall for all five sectors, because you were up 420 percent, is that correct? That, that's correct. And obviously, Tracy, we're very proud of those types of numbers. We're very proud to receive an award from the TSX Venture Exchange. Uh, those are great accolades. But what they really do is they pat the entire team on the back and say, nice job, everybody. You did what you said you're going to do. Everybody worked extremely hard to get this work done in a timely and efficient manner. We spent shareholder resources in a good way last year, and I think the, the market uh, you know, rewarded us for that. Of course, these are the results, and they're all based around the Elk Creek project in Nebraska. Correct. So can you give us a few minutes and an overview on how you found this particular project? I'd like some of our investor intel audience that may not be familiar with this project, because after hearing numbers like this, they're certainly going to want to do some due diligence. Well, I, and we encourage them to do that, and that's always a good idea before you invest anyway. So very good uh, suggestion, Tracy. Um, you know, I was aware of this project for quite some time, uh, having been in the Molly Corp organization for a very long time. Uh, even prior to what I call the new Mo Molly Corp. Um, this deposit was known back in the late 60s and, 19, uh, and, and early 70s. 
Um, it, it was drilled out. Over 50,000 meters of drilling occurred under Molly Corp's uh, management out there. And so it was pretty well known at the time. Um, but then as Molly Corp started to change as a company, uh, remember that niobium really wasn't a known element. It didn't have a, a huge demand. There was, there was no uses that were really known at the time. And simultaneously, Molly Corp was asked by a company in Brazil to come down and help it with its world-class deposit in niobium. And that company, of course, is called CBMM. So Molly Corp uh, really put their good money into the best niobium project at the time, which was CBMM. The uses of niobium have just gone through the roof. Uh, this is a, a product that now sells 90 to 100,000 tons of material a year. It's three and a half to four billion dollars in terms of value every year. So this is a real element. It's a, it's a very needed element and it does a lot of really good things for us. So with that in mind, uh, when I departed Molly Corp and was contacted uh, by the folks at NioCorp to see if I'd be interested in coming on board, my first response was, let me do my due diligence. It had been a while since I'd looked at the resource studies and whatnot. So I took the time, it took about three months to go through all that. And as I went through my checklist, as an investor, I might add, I had no, uh, no real desire to, to get in the, the saddle of another publicly traded company. Uh, I did my due diligence as an investor, and I could not find one check mark that I placed in the no column. Everything looked really good for this project. The resource was good. We knew that with some good hard work, metallurgy could be proven. Uh, we knew that the local community was 100% supportive of the project. The infrastructure for the project was second to none that I've ever seen before. And the permitting is very, very realistic and doable in the state of Nebraska. You start adding all of those things up and it's, you know, maybe we've got something real here, but we needed a little bit more information. And that's when we went out, we raised some money. We started that extensive three-phase drilling program. We started the metallurgy work. We've now done over 500 uh, bench-scale metallurgical tests on this ore. We really know our ore very well right now. We're in the, the mini-pilot phase uh, testing program for those metallurgical processes. And probably towards the end of March, first part of April, we'll start the, uh, the full pilot-scale testing on all this. And this is a huge deposit. So can you speak to the size of this particular deposit? Yeah, we, you know, with this late, latest round of drilling, if we just use some, some rough assumptions for metallurgical recovery and mining rates and whatnot, we now have an indicated resource that will serve us for well over 40 years uh, of mine life. Um, that's just on the indicated numbers, and of course we have inferred numbers as well that when the time is right, we'll go out and do more infill drilling in those inferred areas and hopefully even add more uh, bankable resource to our, our resource estimate. So it, this is going to be a, a really fun project for us to take all the way into production, and we are still absolutely laser focused on being producing uh, producing niobium from this mine in the calendar year 2017. And because niobium may be new to some of our audience members and of course they're very interested in critical materials, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the grade? I understand you have a very high grade of niobium and give us a little bit more uh, information on niobium please Mark, thank you. Absolutely. Our average ore grade as a result of this latest uh, uh, resource estimate comes in at over 0.7 percent. That is the third richest uh, ore grade known on an average basis um, across the world. So again, very proud of that aspect. The other two that are ahead of us are both in Brazil. So uh, we are the richest uh, niobium ore deposit that we are aware of outside of Brazil. So many ways that we could spin that one but I'll leave that as it is right now. Um, the niobium, in terms of its use though, it, it basically goes into steel production and it makes the steel that it's used in much stronger, much more corrosion resistant, much uh, better temperature resistance, and it makes it much lighter in weight. So the steel that's used in automobiles today, and I know we've covered this before, but I just think it's such a great way for people to, to touch niobium and get a feel for how it's used. All the steel that's used in automobiles today is niobium-based steel, and that makes that car safer for you and I as consumers because the steel is stronger, but it also makes it a lighter vehicle 
which means we use less gasoline to go from point A to point B. So it really is a win-win. And then the, the, the beauty of the scandium that we've, uh, we also have in our resource is scandium is to aluminum as niobium is to steel. Scandium makes the aluminum stronger, it makes it more corrosion resistant, it increases its temperature resistance, and it makes it much more weldable. So you think about, that's kind of an ironic uh, situation that we've got the perfect supplement for aluminum and the perfect supplement for steel. Well, we have had such a, a substantial amount of news here. Uh, what should we expect, or dare I even ask you here, for this next quarter? Well, um, as we've publicized, uh, we were conditionally approved to graduate from the TSX Venture Exchange onto the full big board TSX. Uh, the single condition that we had was that we needed to raise an additional $1 million. I think that was a very good decision, by the way, by the TSX. Um, although we were very close in all the requirements that they have for listing, they felt they would be more comfortable approving us if we had $1 million more in the bank to ensure that we could uh, meet or exceed the capital requirements to do all the things that were in our budget for the next 18 months. And as you know, uh, we don't work slowly. So uh, that budget is, is not a, a small amount of money. Uh, so uh, they gave us that conditional approval. The ne very next day, I was on the phone uh, with the investment bankers because I wanted that million dollars raised and I wanted it raised right now. Uh, within two or three days after that, we had a bot deal financing put together with Mackey Research. Uh, Mackey Research called me the day after they opened that deal and said, Mark, the demand is high enough. We need to increase the size of the deal. So we doubled the size of the deal. That, uh, that deal should probably close uh, sometime late this week. As that deal closes and the money flows into our treasury at NioCorp, we will have met that one single condition for TSX listing. So I assume either the following week or the week after, we should actually be traded on the TSX. And what an honor and a privilege that's going to be. Uh, it's the, the exchange that has the, the most number of mining companies uh, under its listings of any exchange in the world. So we're very proud of that. Shortly after that, and we've been very public with this as well, we are putting together a preliminary, preliminary economic assessment. That should be available sometime in mid-March or so. So that will be the next, I think, uh, threshold level of news where people will even get more excited about this project just like we are. And if, if I show that I'm a little excited, uh, I'm sorry, Tracy, but I am a little excited about this project. Well, I'll tell you, if my stock was moving 420%, <laughs> I would be excited as, as well. Thanks again, Mark, for joining us today. It was, it was my pleasure. Always good to see you. <laughs>